Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. And welcome to I Want to See You Win Virtual Bible Study. We're so grateful to each and every one of you that is logging on. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Let us get ready as we uh, walk through the word. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you, Prophetess Sharonda. Amen. God bless you, uh, Brother Philip Capers, my daughter, uh, Janisha. Uh, Lady T, we thank God for Evangelist Brown and uh, Minister um, Patricia being online with us on tonight. Amen. We are so grateful to God for another day that he has kept us in our right mind, in our right spirit. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. That we have a mind and a will and a zeal to want to come to Bible study. Amen. You know, God is entrusting us, people of God, to be faithful even when no one's looking. God is expecting us to be consistent in spite of. Amen. No matter how um, 
we do in life. I mean, we all, I'm sure you guys might have worked today. I work too, as I shared with you. I am a working apostle. I got a lot of jobs on top of that. Amen. <laughs> um, and in spite of how we feel, how our body must be tired, God is still, still expects us to be consistent and faithful in all that he has committed our hands to do. So we are just so grateful um, for those of you that have pressed your way on tonight um, to be able to study God's word. Because how many of you know that heaven and earth shall pass away and it is God's word that will stand. So it is it is a blessing for us to be able to have the word of God in our heart that we will not sin against God. It is a blessing uh, to be able to hear the word of God, to understand the word of God, to have it. You know, we are so blessed here in the great United States of America um, because we get to uh, choose our civil liberties. We get to choose which religion we want to and which God we get to serve. Amen. No one's beating us up for doing what we do. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing that we can choose Christ and he can choose us. And it's a beautiful thing. But some people are not as fortunate as us in other third world countries, you know, um, to be able to call on the name of the Lord could be treason, could be death for them. But we are so blessed here in the United States of America that we are able to call on the name of the Lord. We're able to be saved. We're able to carry our Bibles. We're able to read our Bibles on a park bench and and have no one beat us up for that at least not yet. Amen. So we're just so grateful that we're able to study God's word. And uh, for many of you that may be um, logging in for the first time, we are walking through the Bible. We hear it. I want to see you win ministries. When we say we have Bible study, we mean Bible study. We are walking through God's word. So we're taking our time and we are enjoying the, the, the journey. Um, we're walking from Genesis to Revelation. Right now, we are on the 12th chapter of Genesis, and we are excited about it. So we're going to be discussing that tonight. Amen. Um, but just a little recap. Amen. We thank God for the beginning. Genesis, as we know, is the beginning of the foundation of everything. And the very beginning, we see our Father, our Lord, our, our God, our Creator, the make of heaven and earth. Uh, he creates things. He's methodical in his approach. He does everything just well. And because of that, as we're walking through these scriptures, we are learning the character. We're learning what the expectation is. We're understanding the heart of God. And I'm going to tell you some people of God, as you read the word, that's why I encourage everybody to read the word for yourself. Because when you read the word of God for yourself, you get to understand who it is that you're serving, who you're sacrificing for. You understand the temperament of our creator. We understand how, how he has an expectation how he expects us to live, what we're supposed to do. He loves for us to have fellowship and communion with him. You're going to find out that those that's in the Bible, that when they built altars unto God, when they served God, God blessed their life. Amen. So we're just so grateful on tonight that we are so blessed to be able to be able to share the word of God. It is just a blessing. And so as we're walking through the word, amen, as I always tell you guys, when we come to Bible study, make sure you have your pen and paper. Pen and paper is very important because you might want to jot down some notes. Um, I know when I go through the Bible, um, I like to write down notes like, hmm, I wonder why that happened. Or, hmm, I wonder why he did that. Um, and so it, uh, once again, it helps us to understand the, the uh, psychological mindset of people as well as understand ourselves, understand um, what the expectation is of God and how he, you know, our God is so phenomenal. When you read just from the very beginning stages of God's word, it will just blow your mind just to know how he is serious about deception. He's serious about for us not to be lying and he doesn't like deceiving, deception. And we're going to read in chapter 12 in Genesis how, you know, when things get awry, you know, God learns how to turn up the, the flame. So I'm telling you, as we're going through this Bible, I'm telling you, you're going to learn about how God operates. So, and again, it's very imperative, especially in this season that we're in as believers, when there's so much going on in our life, you know, people are, are trying to always cast doubt and, and, and fear upon us as if there is no God. 
Well, if there was a God, then why is this happening? If there was a God, why is this happening? But when you know and have that foundational structure of faith in your spirit, and you know that you walk through the Holy Scriptures and you know the character of God and, and the integrity of God and how he operates, then you, you understand certain things that people don't. I'm telling you the difference between people that are blessed and people that are cursed, those that are cursed, a lot of times they may not have had access to the information to know that they're, they, they could have done better for themselves. I'm telling you, we perish for a lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you, people of God, it is imperative that you understand that the word of God comes to set us free. It comes to liberate us. It causes us to um, understand ourselves and understand our walk and our relationship with God. And I'm telling you, that's a lifelong journey that we all need to be on because the more you know, the more you grow. Amen. So I'm just excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about what he's doing. I'm telling you, and God is up to something great. He's up to something great. He's up to something marvelous. And it is just us to just walk and and enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, you know, of, of, of reading the scripture. That's why we want to take our time with it. I, this is not a, a marathon. This is a sprint. We have to take our time with it. People of God, we have to enjoy enjoy, enjoy God's word. Because when you enjoy God's word, I'm telling you, it just feels so much better. As you're digesting his word, it, it'll it strengthen you up. It'll strengthen you up in times of weakness. It'll strengthen you up in times of fear. It'll strengthen you up in times of doubt. So it's imperative, people of God, that you stay prayed up, you stay in God's word so that it can build you up even greater. Amen. So listen, we're going to get started. Um, And before we get started, as always, we love to uh, approach the throne of grace, ask God's blessing upon our Bible study, ask God to come in the midst and even in the midst of you, that he will download revelation and, and information into your spirit, that it may help you and cultivate you in some way, that something is said on tonight that will bless your life, that you will grow even stronger as a man or woman of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you, oh God, for this time of virtual Bible study, Lord. Who would have ever thought it, God, that this is the way that the means that we come into people's home now where we are able to share the word of God by way of this platform. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for this time of of, of getting into your word, God. We pray, God, that you would feed our mind, our souls, and our spirit on tonight. Father, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that you would touch them in the city of their soul, God, that you will illuminate them with your word, God, that you will strengthen them, oh God, in their most holiness of faith, God, that they will not be swayed, they will not be deceived by the enemy, God, but they will be built up, God, in their most holiness of faith. Father, we thank you on tonight, God. And if there be any uh, sick among us tonight that may be watching, oh God, this Bible study, we pray and decree and declare that they're healed, God, now in the name of Jesus. If there be any confused of the mind, confused of the spirit, God, confused in identity, God, Father, we pray, God, that you will bring clarity, God, that you will bring understanding, that you will bring wisdom to them on tonight, God. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will come in the midst of us, oh God. Oh God, sup with us, oh God, impart into us, oh God. Oh God, we pray on tonight, God, that heaven will respond to us tonight, God, as we walk through your word to know more of you, God. Oh God, we want want to be more pleasing unto your sight, God. We want to be pleasing to you, God, in every which way, God. And so, Father, we pray, God, that you would come in the midst of us, oh God, and move, oh God, like you've never moved before. God, wherever we may be, God, if we be in our cars, and our homes, uh, oh God, on our jobs, looking at this, Father, even those that may see the rebroadcast, bless God, oh God, deliver and set the captives free tonight, that they will be able to feast off this word in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank God on tonight, amen, for what he's getting ready to do. Oh, my God, I feel glory, amen. Listen, we have been walking through Genesis. Um, Right now, we're doing from Genesis, and all the way, we have made it to the 12th chapter of Genesis. What a blessing. We've gone through the flood, amen. Wait a minute. We've gone through through the garden, amen. We've gone through murders. We've gone through uh, corruption, amen. We've gone through... um, repopulation. We've gone through the flood, repopulation. We've gone through them splitting up, going into different areas. Now here we have a man named Abram. 
and he's getting ready to lead us on into chapter 12 in Genesis. So I'm excited about that. Uh, the great thing about this thing is many of us can relate on tonight about a journey. How many of you know that in life, we all have a journey? I believe that from the time that we're born, uh, God allows us to journey, to sojourn to different places, times of our life. And sometimes many of us have gone through things in our life, through our journeys of life and our travels of life. And some of us are ashamed of it and some of us are proud of it. But I want you to know today that everything has purpose and everything has meaning in your life. That one thing about God, he doesn't allow us to just do anything by happenstance or by situation. There's a purpose and a reason for our praise. There's a purpose and a reason for our journey. Amen. And there comes a bigger picture to the, to the movement of your life. Amen. So we're going to read in chapter 12 in Genesis. And the Bible says, and now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. The first thing we understand here when we're reading, and hopefully you have done your reading in advance, but you understand that God gives instruction to Abraham to get away from his familiar place. And he's causing him to now go into a place of faith. I don't know about you, but I, I, I can relate to Abram's journey right there because when God begins to tell you to go into a, a, a place of an unfamiliar place that you've never been before, that's when you know that you're really walking with God because it takes faith. And the Bible lets us know that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And so faith is not seeing, faith is believing. You need to write that down. Faith is not seeing, faith is believing. And you, when, when you believe in the God of your salvation and he tells you to do this and he tells you to do that and you're willingly doing it, that means you are at a point of maturity that you're trusting in God because it takes faith to move. You know, if, if you're waiting to see something, people of God, listen, you'll be waiting forever. Because one thing for certain, one thing for sure, our eyes will play tricks on us. This is why we wear glasses, because our, our eyes are not always reliable. But it's important that we understand that our brain is. And when you have, when your mind is conditioned to um, being obedient to God, then you're not moved to the left. You're not moved to the right. You're only moved by his instruction. And so the Bible declares that he tells Abram, notice his name is Abram, tells him to go to get away from his familiar place and bring him to a place that he's not familiar with, but a place God's going to show him. And notice that when he told him to go, y'all, he didn't give him all the details. See, some of y'all waiting for all the details. And I'm telling you, you're going to keep on waiting because God ain't going to give you all of the details. We even prophesy in part. You know, he doesn't give us all the details, even as prophets. He will have us to prophesy something. And it's usually a part, something that is confirmative to your spirit. But he doesn't give us the bigger picture. If you would have told me uh, uh, six years ago that I would be sitting in this chair, sitting in this house, in this location on uh, Facebook Live teaching you right now, I would have laughed at you when I was living so good and so wonderful in my wonderful home in North Carolina and living the life. OK, not excuse me, not that I'm not living a life here. Praise the Lord. But I'm just saying I was so comfortable in my surroundings where I was. I could not see further past the forest from the trees, if you please, right? So when God tells you to, to come out of your comfort zone and he tells you to come on, come on out here and do this and do that, and you're like, wait a minute, hold up. You know, if you got a question when God tells you to move, that means you're not conditioned yet. That means you're not broken yet. That means you're still walking in flesh. Can I just help you? When, when God tells you to do something, like when he tells you, um, give that offering, do this, do that. And you got a question of second guess everything. Then that means you're not at that place just yet. And you need to acknowledge that and say, Lord, work on me. Help me to get to that place. I need to be, cause I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little too sassy. I like to call it, uh, uh, God, I'm being a little bit too sassy in the spirit to you right now. Cause sometimes God will tell us stuff. He'll say, okay, daughter, I want you to fast for two days. And you're like, mm, I don't know. I got a, um, I got a lunch date on Wednesday. I don't know about that two days. Could we do it next week? No, I said this week. Well, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. Or he may be calling you into prayer to another dimension of praying. He's waking you up at three and four o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh no, I, that's my sleep time. God, can we do this at seven? So you sassy in the spirit. You're not ready for next level just yet. You still, you still warring in your flesh. God wants you to come out of that. 
Because as you come out of that, when he tells you to come on and pray at four o'clock, you'll be like, okay, God, I'm up at four and you're not a minute late. You're not, <laughs> you're on point. See, that's when you at that level of, of maturity and you trust in God. Okay. So God tells Abram to get on out of the familiar. And I believe people of God that when we understand what God is trying to do in our life, we need to get out of the familiar. Some of us are too familiar with things. And because we are um, so familiar with things, um, what happens is uh, we get stuck in the familiar and we try to put God in a box. Can I tell you that? God said he's going to come out the box. <laughs> I want you to let him out the box. Let him be God in your life. Because sometimes we want to control God. We want to say, God, I want you to do it this way. I want you to do it that way. And God, if you don't do it that way, then that ain't God. Like some people cannot relate to the fact that we are having church online. We have Bible study online. We have service online. And some people can't get with it because they're so used to God in a building. But God is showing us even through this, this, this lockdown, shutdown, that uh, y'all got me all messed up. Y'all think that it's all about big brick and mortar when I'm a global God. I'm a universal God. I can go to your bathroom, your car, your hospital room. I can be everywhere at the same time because I'm God. And I do what I please whenever I please. And so when you try to box God in, he knows how to flip the script on us <laughs> and take us out of our comfort zone. So that's what he did uh, to Abram. So he told him to come on out from your father's house. It means I want you to take a journey with me, Abram. And I believe God is telling some folk to come on out of your father's house. Come on out of the familiar. Come on out and take this journey with me. And so I will make the listen to the promises. And this is why I'm telling you, I just get so excited when I read this because I feel like I have been Abram. Do you hear what I'm saying? When God told me to come out of my comfort zone from North Carolina and come to Texas, I tell you what, he, he I, I get excited when I look at the promises that he made Abram, that just do something for me. And I'm telling you, God is calling some of you out of your comfort zone. He may not be calling you out of your city and your state, but I'm telling you, he's calling you out of your, your familiar. He's calling you out of those familiar friends, those familiar locations. And he said, take a journey with me to the new thing. Behold, I do a new thing in your life. Let him do it. Let him do the new thing. Let him bless your life. Let him do something new. Let him shift you. Let him lift you. But go with the flow of God. Amen. And so Abram went with the flow of God. But one thing about God, when he tells you to do something, my God in the morning. I feel you, Jesus. When he tells you to do something, he made a covenant promise. He made an agreement to Abram. And I don't know, but I believe that we are the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, the same promises that Abram got, mm -hmm, we got some of them promises too. So I'm telling you, if this don't make you happy, I don't know what will. <laughs> but let me tell you something. He tells him in verse two, and I will make of thee a great nation. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation, not just, I'm not just going to bless your life. I'm going to impact nations because of you and your obedience. So it lets us know people of God, that what we do is not just for us. It's not just for us. People of God It's for others. I'm telling you, it is not just for us. It's for others. Many of you I, I need to pause right here because many of you have given up on love and many of you have thinking that no one's going to love you and nobody wants you and you've been written off and your heart has been under lock and key and under new management. Everybody's saying all that good stuff. But let me tell you something. God is a God of second chances and he knows who to send in your life and he knows who to bless to to be a blessing in your life. And I'm telling you, people of God, God knows how to do it. All we have to do is be willing and obedient and let God be God in your life. So he makes a promise to him and he says, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Woo, my, 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 my. And thou shalt be a blessing. Mm, my goodness. And then verse three says, and I will bless them. Now, this is my favorite part because this, let me tell you something. You can say whatever you want. I've seen this happen a thousand and one times. It says in verse three, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So he was telling Abram, listen, Abram, it's not about you, Abram. It's about not just you, but what you do is going to affect many nations and generations to come. What does that tell us when we are studying about our father, getting to know our father. It tells us that he is generational. I mean, my God, when he, when he 
what he wants to bless you. Let me tell you something. I really believe this with every fiber of my being. And I am a witness to this thing. When God wants to bless you, he don't just want to bless you, but he want to bless everything that's connected to you. My God, I think about, but it all stems from your obeying him. You see, uh, Abram's blessing, he wouldn't have been what God has pro pro prophesied into his life if he had not followed God. You see, the, the key factor is this. When we follow God, serve God with our whole heart, we are setting our generations and generations to come. The blessings that's in your on your life is going to trickle down on your children's life. I'm a recipient of that. My mother was tremendously blessed. I, the blessings fell on me because I accepted the God she served. And, and I'm telling you, it's all about acceptance and obedience. When you learn to accept and you obey, the sky's the limit. And so he tells him this. And he says... All I like this. And in thee, he said, it's in you, Abram. It's in you. Shall all families of the earth be blessed? I'm going to found what he was giving Abram, y'all, was a foundational blessing. He was giving him a foundational blessing. And all because of his obedience, we would also reap the benefits. So in verse four, so Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Notice he was obedient. He didn't question him. He just did what the Lord told him to do. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sari, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, and they had gathered, and the souls that had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, uh, unto the plain of Moron, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there build he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Now, here we see God talking to him in the beginning. Then he divinely reveals himself to him. And as a direct result of the, the revelation of him revealing himself to him, the Bible says he made an altar to God. So he dedicated this land to him. And then in verse eight, and he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Harry on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and came upon the name of the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. So he's looking and seeking God for direction. He's seeking God for clarity. And Abram, and then in verse 10, it says, and there was a famine in the land and Abram went down into Egypt to soldier there for the famine was grievous in the land. And verse 11, and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah, his wife, behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Now, now I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to continue on. But isn't it funny? We see him, a man who is seeking the face of God. He builds an altar to God. God reveals himself to him. Yet he makes this humanistic assumption what he should do. I say to you again, if you haven't, if you've been going through this from the, from chapters one to 12, you know, whenever mankind decides to make decision, independent outside of God, there's always a problem. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, there's always a problem. So he begins to say in verse 12, there it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Verse 13, say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that, <laughs> that it may be well with thee, for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee. Now, listen here. In essence, 
we see that although, and this is something that you all that, that may have struggles. And again, I love the word of God because we can find ourselves in the word of God. But those of you that have tr struggles, listen, Abram was an upright man. He, he prayed to God. He built altars to God. But let's be realistic. Abram had some fear. Abram thought he was going to die. And, 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 and he had a, obviously he had a trust issue because anybody who spent time with God, God reveals himself to you. Don't you think God would have been concerned enough to protect, protect him from the people that would try to kill him? He didn't trust God enough to believe that. Instead, he, he re relied on his humanistic side, his humanistic side, and felt that if we play a game with the people, I'll survive. Again, I say to you, whenever mankind decides to make decisions independent from God, there's always a problem. So again, why are we going through the word of God? You ask yourself, why, why would it, why is it necessary to go through the word of God? It's necessary to go through the word of God so you can learn the God of your salvation. You need to understand how God operates. You need to understand how human humanity operate, which cause us, us to get in a lot of trouble with God. And so when you read these examples of God's word, it would cause you to also think like, wow, I, I better be mindful of that as also. But listen to what happens. This is a, a decision that Abram decided to make to play games, to pretend that Sarah, his wife, was his sister because he thought his life was going to be in jeopardy because she was so beautiful that the, that the people were going to kill him because of her. So it's, it was obvious that Abram, not only did he didn't trust God, but he was obviously insecure, thinking that someone was going to kill him over his beautiful wife. Listen to what happens. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, uh, beheld the woman that she was very fair. She was so beautiful, you know. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. So because of her beauty, you know, they said, you know, what am I supposed to pay bills with my beauty? You ever heard that expression? Well, Sarah, obviously, Sari was so fine. She could, you know, as soon as they look at her, they wanted her in the in the, in the royal house with Pharaoh, the king because she had a kingly beauty about her, obviously, that as soon as they looked at her, she was beautiful. But they had, and, and, uh, and so in verse 16, it says, and he entreated Abram well. Listen, he treated Abram well, all because he thought that that was his sister. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he, and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. So, <laughs> so Abram was benefiting because of Sari's beauty. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. uh, and so <laughs> verse 17, now this is the thing that I love. This is the thing. Let me tell you something. God sees all and he knows all. Verse 17 said, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. Verse 18, and Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why sayest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to, to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. He kicked them out. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. So Pharaoh was getting them out of the, getting them away from him because he realized that they was causing him problems. Whew, ain't that deep? I say all that to say is that notice God told on them. <laughs> I mean, God told on them because they lied. They deceived. Whew, this is the first introduction, people of God. We know that deception is something that is prevalent nowadays. But please understand from the beginning of the garden, deception, deception was present there. And it found its way back in, in chapter 12. You, you would think, people of God, after the flood, after the corruption, that there should have been no more nothing, right? Here we see a door is open once again because 
Abram is now lying that saying Sari is his sister instead of his wife. Wow. So he was being very deceptive. And then God, because he's a God of integrity, a God of character, a God of truth. Oh, we can't remember. We can't forget those things that we serve a God of integrity, a God of truth. And he expects us to be the same way. And that's why he caused there to be a plague so that uh, he did not make it be comfortable for Pharaoh at all so that the, the jig could be up. The lie could be exposed and they can get on out of there. But the thing is, I go back to the, the original question with all of that seeking God, with all of that building an altar, you would have thought he would have trust God for his safety. Ain't that something? So that lets us know, people of God, we could be prayed up. We could be the most devout anybody. But when the rubber meets the road and the pressure's on and we get excuse me, insecure in our flesh, what happens is we resort to a human moment and our human moment found us, found him lying because a lie, the Bible says, does the Bible not say a liar won't tarry in his sight? What was Abram doing? He lied. He was being deceptive, pretending that that was his sister when all along it was his wife. He was willing to sacrifice the unity of marriage just to pretend and 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 Pharaoh might have tried to marry her because she was so beautiful and he thought that you know this was his the man's sister so he got perks so they were they were they was playing what they were doing was playing Pharaoh they was playing a game on Pharaoh but God see that's going back to understand how God operates God is a God of integrity and God of truth. And I told you from Genesis 1 to 12, we have seen every time mankind mess up, God cleans up. Y'all need to write that down. Every time mankind mess up, God cleans up. So I, 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 I caution us because it is apparent to me, and this is just my observation, that we as a people have we have spent so much time being infatuated with God that we have never really learned who God is because when people really really learn who God is then there's a level of respect and fear that comes upon them that they would be too frightened to pretend or too frightened to do certain things that we know people do and we have to address the fact that if people are doing all kind of way with stuff they definitely did not read this Bible. They couldn't have. <laughs> they have, and if they did, they read it with no understanding and no clarity because it is apparent to me that God always cleans up a mess that we make. And a lot of times it comes with exposure or judgment. In this particular case, we find that he exposed them and that's why he, he turned up the flames and plagued. He plagued Pharaoh because technically, based on law, it was wrong that he's lusting and thinking that he's going to marry somebody's wife. And the, the true instance was there was a game. They were playing a game. So when people ask me, you know, in the Bible about, you know, having concubines and different things in the Bible and stuff of that nature, I always resort to that particular scripture. I said, well, if God was so pleased with it, then why didn't he let, you know, Pharaoh marry a, um, Sari and it, the jig would have been up, you know, he would have just had, she would have had two husbands instead of one, but he didn't allow it to be so. Instead, he plagued, he plagued the house of Pharaoh because of this lie. So God don't like lies. He does not enjoy. He does not, he's not in agreement with deceptive practices. So we have to be so careful people of God when we do deceptive practices, because the very thing that we're deceptive about, it could plague us later, later on, you know? So we have to be very careful. You know, we have to, because, um, it's, it's, it's in our nature to do that. Notice Abram, <laughs> where he got that revelation from clearly, we see in the very beginning, he's having a conversation with God. God is leading him. God isn't telling him what to do. God even made an promise, told him that I'm going to 
you know, your name is going to be great. I'm going to do all of that. So if God was speaking all that good stuff to him, surely God wouldn't have allowed nobody to take his life because God spoke in the very beginning. But somehow understanding human nature, understanding human fears, obviously Abram was fearful in some way that he felt that he could help God out. <laughs> And you'll find out about this couple, this Sarah and Abram. They 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 into always trying to help God out. Okay. And we'll find out later on how, you know, that spirit jumps on her and she wants to help God out. You know, it's just I I am in my older age, I'm understanding that spirits are transferable. And sometimes we think we destroy stuff. And I'm telling you, people, stuff be lingering and lurking. And stuff don't always die. They multiply. And by the time you deal with one thing, they jumped over and done something else. And I'm convinced of that because you'll find out that um, that same spirit of deception, <laughs> that same spirit of trying to help God out, that's what follows them. So I, 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 I just say I'm just caution, cautious with you all because, you know, when it comes to God's word, we understand very profoundly that, uh, you know, God is a God of integrity and character. And he did not want uh, there to be any misunderstanding where Sari and Abram was about. They were married. And notice, notice as you were reading, when you was reading chapter 12 of Genesis, did you not, I don't know, I'm very analytical. So when I'm reading, I was astonished to find out that Pharaoh came to the realization like, hey, wait a minute, this must be your wife. <laughs> why did you tell me? He even asked, why did you do this thing to me? Like, in essence, Pharaoh felt some kind of way like, you set me up. Like, why did you set me up? <laughs> there was no reason for you to set me up. So he felt some kind of way because of her being in his house, nothing was going right. And that's, and I'm gonna tell you something, people of God, this here is a sheer example that sometime a house will become plagued. A house becomes plagued, could become plagued because of somebody's disobedience. And that's really what it was. It's disobedient to lie because the Lord told Abram what to do. He told him where to go, but he never told him to lie about his wife. That was something that he decided. And so that teaches us as people of God, if God is leading us and guiding us into all truth, let him do that. Don't try to reinvent the wheel in trying to make independent decisions for ourselves. When God has been leading you all along, why don't you let him keep leading you? I don't know why we as a people do that. We like to let God lead us sometime and they say, you know what, God, you're taking too long. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> and then you get yourself in trouble. And that's what happened with Abram. And I think, and, 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 and analyzing this, okay, when the famine hit, the Bible says, and a famine, and in verse 10, it says, and there was a famine in the land. And I believe because of that famine, there came fear. Sometimes we get fearful in our famine days, and it causes us to become desperate. But people of God, that's the time in your famine that you got to trust God ever the more. Because the same God that blessed you before the famine is the same God that blessed you in the famine. And somehow, some way, Abram was doing good until the Bible says there was a famine. And once the famine hit, they went and took a turn and they ended up in a land. And then they wanted to see the people so that they could get preferential treatment. Because the Bible says that because he played that game. Hear me, because he deceived the king, she was able to live good and he was able to be living good too. So they were, they was isolated, protected in the midst of the famine. And I'm telling you, people of God, if you got to cut corners to do all kinds of things in the midst of uh, situations, that's because you have allowed fear to enter in. But see, I, I'm telling you, it was evident that God was even yet with them in the midst of their famine because it was God that told on them and exposed their lie. Now that's something that's my God, that's bad when God exposed you. It's another thing for you to be honest, but it's another thing for God to expose you. But let's tell the truth and, and shame the devil. I believe 
that if he, if God had not played Pharaoh's house, they would have still been playing that game. They wouldn't have not stopped because they got comfortable in the deception. What am I saying, people of God? Sometimes we get comfortable in deception. We we wouldn't know how to live if we wasn't being abused or, or deceived. Some people, all they can see in their life is deception. All they can see in their spirit is deception. And without it, they will know what it's like to, to have liberty and freedom and to have people love them and, and revere them. They will know how to act because all they know is abuse and, 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 and fear and all that other kind of stuff. And it's apparent that uh, Abram panicked. He panicked. And when he panicked, he told a lie. So uh, it's a lesson for us as humans that when you are fearful, don't lie. Tell the truth. I believe that if he would have trusted God, Pharaoh would have still took them in the house. That's what I believe. I believe Pharaoh would have still honored them. Pharaoh would have did them right. And they would have had a greater relationship as well. But unfortunately, um, he told a lie that brought a plague upon them. And see what happened. I'm going to tell you, I hear the Holy Ghost speaking real good. And what it is, is this. Sometimes we forget Notice when Abram got the instructions to leave out of his father's house. What did God tell him? I'm going to make your name great. I'm in essence, I'm going to affect through you. You're going to affect nations. And so it is imperative that if you're going to have that much of an impact on nations, God can't have nobody make an impact on nations. That's a liar and deceptive. And so this is why God had to expose him. And, and, and turn a plague up so that they can be, they, they can be, ex, the lie could be exposed. Sometimes God will expose the lie so that you can uh, be delivered. You know, he had to get away from Pharaoh because he was messing up Pharaoh's business. And it wasn't Pharaoh's fault. Unfortunately, Pharaoh uh, entreated people that he thought was who he thought. But sometimes, even if you in, in, invite somebody in and they're not being who they are, because they're lying and God is not pleased, it's going to affect your business. It's going to affect your life. So we have to be so careful who we allow into our house. Because that's what happened to Pharaoh. He allowed them into his house and then his business went bad, as I like to say. My, and you know what? I will say this. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. Those of you, those of you that watch or the regular, you know what I'm getting ready to say. If you walk with the cripple, that's what Thelma used to tell me every time when I was a little girl. She said, Angel, if you walk with the cripple, you'll be limping too. <laughs> and I'm telling you, people of God, when you walk with the cripple, you're going to be limping too. That's why you have to be so careful. And poor Pharaoh, he invited those people into his house thinking that they was who they say they was. And unfortunately, his business went bad because the Bible says God plagued. He plagued his house, all kinds of plagues. And, and you know what the, what scared me about this whole sentence in <laughs> verse 17? And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great, not a little bit of plagues, y'all, great plagues, huge, great outstanding plagues is what happened because of deception. What is deception, Apostle Daniels? Uh, deception is when you deceive, when you're pretending to be something you're not. They were pretending to be brother and sister instead of husband and wife. When you pretend, oh, can I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost in that. When you pretend to be anything you're not, that is deception at its highest level. And deception at its highest level will birth another spirit called witchcraft and control. What am I saying? I'm saying that when a person has to pretend, they are lying. And when people pretend, the Bible lets me know that Satan is what? The father of lies. And so they're not taking on the DNA of their father, God. They're taking on the DNA of Satan. Because anybody that are, is deceptive and pretend, then they are not living their true self. But they are living a lie. They are living um, beneath their privileges because they're living like the deceptive one, Satan. 
And you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, the Bible says we perish for a lack of knowledge because people think they're doing good by pretending to others and creating perceptions that's not correct. But what you're doing, you're opening yourself up to witchcraft. You're opening up yourself um, to a deceptive spirit. God does not birth deceptive spirits. The Satan does. The Bible, if, if God was so into deceptive spirits, he wouldn't have played Pharaoh's house. He would have let it go on. But the type of God that we serve, he's all about truth. And anything contrary to truth, that's not in his DNA. And so we as a people have to be very, very cons concerned with if we're properly representing our father. We say that we're, we're, we're a daughter of a God, a daughter, a woman of God, a man of God. Well, we have to not just have on titles, but we have to have attributes and characteristics of our father. OK, now my father. And I, we're not the closest people in America, but I tell you, I got some characteristics of my biological father. He says TV is his, his, boy, his girlfriend. And I happen to be a television buff, you know, and, and before I, I met my fiance, you know, I spent my life watching TV and reading books. You know, I love TV. TV was my boyfriend too. So I'm just saying it's, it's, you know, I have that characteristic. I got that from my biological father. My father loves television. I got that from him. And I never even lived in the same house with the man. But if you look at my TV time and how he loves his TV, that's how it is with us. You know, I got some other characteristics of my mother. You know, it's just when you're connected by DNA, you have certain characteristics of your parents, okay? And so one of the DNAs that we have to understand that God does not tolerate is deceptive and lying practices. And that's what gets a lot of us in trouble. Um, and that's why we as a kingdom, we are in trouble because we're not properly representing uh, Christ or our father on the earth because we don't want to be real. And I've always said, if you can't be real, you'll never be healed because God can't, he can't get to the nook and cranny of what the real issue is because you're not willing to confess your faults to him. You're not willing to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I got this problem. I got that one. No. And because some of us, we live facade so long that in public, we have to dress the part. We have to be the part. We got to always look like we have to together because we don't want people to know the truth about us because we like to carry the spirit of deception. You know, some people, you know, I don't listen what I'm getting ready to say now. I don't want y'all to think that I, I hate makeup and all that other kind of stuff. I wear lipstick and I wear makeup from time to time. I don't wear a lot of it, but I wear from time to time, you know, and um, sometimes some people they cannot go outside without makeup. They can't go outside without being having an image. It's all about image with them. And if to, for them not to portray their image is just not right. They they don't know how to act because they're so they they out of their element of pretend or their element of facade. But you see, you have to understand, people of God, that. God, he, he, he deals with truth. He's, he's a love of truth. He is the truth. He's the truth. He's the way, you know, and when we say that we are proper re representation upon him, people of God, we have to also be that same way. And what Abram did is not a good example of, of pretending. It's, it was very deceptive. And because of that deception in that man's house, that is why the plague was there. What does that teach us about lying? That means that our lies will cause plagues to come up in our life. Woo, boom. Yes, uh, what we do will affect our life. So we have to be people of different. It used to be a day and age, people of God, that the saints of God, their word was their bond. Now you don't even trust what men or women of God say no more because they lie as quick as the cat will say meow. And so, you know, it used to be a time when a man or woman of God said they was going to do this or they was going to do that. You're like, wow, praise the Lord. Now, is now the attitude is, well, we'll see when we'll see when it happened because you don't know because people are so fickle. We have lost integrity. We have lost the character. We have lost the truth of God. 
And I'm telling you, people of God, a lot of it is because of ignorance. A lot of it is because we thought we could get away with it. A lot of it is because we didn't know that there was other people in the Bible like what we are and that and they had struggles like we did and how God uh, judged them accordingly for it. So we thought, in fact, that we could get away with stuff. But as we read in Genesis from Genesis 1 to 12, you find out God didn't let them get away with nothing. <laughs> so I will never understand when I see people blatantly do stuff, I'm like, well, Lord, y'all not scared of nothing. But we need to be bringing that spirit of fear back. We afraid of everything except for being afraid of God. And that's the person you need to have fear and reverence for. And when I say fear, meaning fear, you don't want to let them down. Fear, you don't want to disappoint them. Fear, you want to be able to make sure that he is, um, you know, pleased with you. I mean, I'm not saying nobody in this life is perfect, y'all. We all striving for perfection daily. But my goodness, at least make an effort. Make an effort. Make an effort, I say to you, make an effort. Because we, when you make an effort, God will help you if you're making an effort. God will walk with you if you're struggling. If you'll be open and honest and say, Lord, I need help. I need help with this. I need help with that. There's some people that try to do stuff to you, and you say, Lord, just help me. Some people, you know, I was I was teasing with my armor bearer uh, today and I was telling her, I said, I just said, Lord, please help me. Because, you know, some of my jokes, only I get my jokes. Some people don't think it's funny, but it's funny to me. So I have to say, Lord, just help me. Just help me. You know, because I realize I have some flaws, too. Nobody's perfect. And anybody who tell you that they're perfect, they are full of the devil and they lying to you because ain't nobody perfect. We all got flaws. We all try to strive for perfection. We all try to do what we can do for the Lord, you know, but you want to do it with a pureness of heart and a love of, of, of truth and want to do all that you can do, you know, so God will be pleased with you. That's all we're saying. And so we find our great uh, person, Abram, he did all that seeking God. God made him a promise in the beginning. And then he went on like we do today and had an independent moment and decided to do a deceptive move. And I would suggest to you, people of God, and I'll say it again, if that famine had not uh, hit, there might have not been no fear. But somehow he let his fear get the best of him and cause him to make a bad decision. Oh my goodness gracious. We could stop right there and park right there because a lot of us, if the truth be told, sometime in panic mode, we have made some bad, bad decisions. And I'm telling you, people of God, we need to rethink some of our decisions because our decisions is what's getting us in trouble. Because why? This is my thing. I, I'm, I'm always amazed at people that say they seek God for the little things. But then when it's a big decision, they don't seek God for nothing. They make their own decisions and their own choices. No. The same God that he made that altar to, the one he prayed for, the one that showed up for him was the same God that he could say, Lord, I have fear that if I go there, them people are going to do something to us. He didn't do that. He made an independent choice of his own to say, this is what we're going to do, Sari. We are going to pretend you're my sister so I can live. At that point, he didn't trust God. And I'm telling you, people of God, some of us, if the truth be told, let's just call it for what it is. We don't trust God. And so when we don't trust God, people of God, we make our own decisions. And the truth be told, let's be honest, our decisions have gotten us in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, I thank God for this point of my life that I'm old now, that I don't want to make more decisions anymore. I don't, I don't want to make any more decisions and mess up. I'm too old now for that. You know, when I was young, you know, I, I, I did stuff and it didn't work out because I didn't know what I was doing. And it was obvious that Abram didn't know what he was doing either. And so in this, in this passage of scripture, I don't know what happened with you guys, but what I gathered from this and what I took and my takeaway is this, don't make independent decisions outside of God, the same God you seek and you pray to you seek and say, God, what should I do? Lead me, guide me into all truth. Lead me and guide me. Show me the way. Show me the way. 
You know, there's times in my life I pray and just scream, show me the way, Lord, show me the way. Because sometimes, let me tell you why I, I cry out to God all the time about direction. Because when you have gone to school and you're educated and you think you know a little something, something, it's so easy to make decisions. It's so easy to say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Well, I know how to do that because I went to school and that's what they tell you to do. But that may not be what you need to do at that particular time. That may not be it. And I have learned through the, the school of hard knocks, honey, my goodness gracious, the school of hard knocks. I refuse to make any more independent decisions. I got to talk to God about everything because with my creative mind, I'll be doing all kinds of stuff. And a lot of people are doing a whole lot of kind of stuff and it ain't God. And it's bringing about failure. You see that plague, when you think of plague, we think of, ooh, great death, great this. A plague could be a bunch of failures. A bunch of failures is a plague. If you keep failing, 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 honey, you, you in a plague in your life. And you need to stop what you're doing and say, Lord, is it me, God? Am I in the way? Am I messing up? Because I'm quick to say that. I don't know about other folks. Some folk are too prideful. They don't never think it's them. It's always somebody else, right? But I am quick to say, Lord, is it me, God? Because please, Lord, I need to be blessed. And whatever I need to do, God, I'm finna do it. What you want me to do? You know, I, I, I've come to that point in my life because it's better that way. Anything other than that, it's just a lot of abuse for no reason. Some people like to get beat by God every five minutes. I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't like it. So, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm quick to say, Lord, well, what you want me to do, God? Yeah, what should I be doing, God? Yeah, what should I be doing, God? Yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, when you're intelligent, you could do a whole lot of stuff. But if you give it over to the Lord and let him do it for you and let him guide you, I promise you those leading and guidance of God will lead you somewhere and it'll take you somewhere and it'll bless your life tremendously. And I'm telling you, being blessed by God is the best thing. I'm telling you, the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add us no sorrow. And I'm here to tell the world on this Facebook Live today that if you obey God, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And I am a witness to that thing. I'm not just telling that because it's, it's in the Bible. It's a good Bible. So I'm telling you what I'm living. It's good to obey God. It's not to obey man. You got to get in a place, people of God. And when I say obey man, please, I'm not birthing a rebellious people. Please, I don't want nobody to think that. What I'm saying is, is that it's better to obey God that will lead you to people to be in your life that could give you sound wisdom. Everybody's not equipped to speak into your life, y'all. Everybody's not equipped to be your pastor and your leader, okay? God calls people into your life because that person has something you need for you to succeed, okay? They have something in their, in their mouth, in their bosom, in their pants, something they got for you. That's going to bless your life tremendously. So everybody needs somebody to take them to the next level. And anybody that thinks that they can do this on their own, they're crazy. And more power to you. <laughs> more power to you. But when you understand that it, 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 if it takes a village to raise a child, what do you think it takes for people to get to the next level? It takes a person that has your best interest at heart to help you to get from point A to point B. It's imperative that you have the right ingredients to make a cake. It's imperative that you have the right elements to be successful. And so it's imperative that you have certain people and certain things in your life. So um, it, it's just amazing how God and what he's doing in this season. But he's teaching us right now in this season. Let me tell you what he's doing. He's teaching you about you and he's teaching you about him. You need to learn about you and you need to learn about him because you're going to learn some things through this process that's going to bless your life tremendously. He's going to bless you in a way that you never thought was possible because of obedience. At the end of the day, Abram started out good because he obeyed God, but then he went to the left because God didn't tell him to do that. <laughs> and we, we can be, you know, we as a people, we got to be so careful because we can start out good. We, um, you know, I, you, we can start out good. We can start out good. We can start out good and be obedient. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we, we can start out good and be obedient. 
And then the next thing you know, here we go. We go to the left again. Then we get beat up to the left, and here we go to the right again. Then you look for us again, we to the left again. There's an inconsistency. And where there's inconsistency, people of God, there's chaos. God wants us to be consistent in our walk, in our talk, in our faith to him. That's where we all striving. Now, I'm not going to tell you there's not going to be moments where you're going to be inconsistent. Everyone does. Everyone is consistent, some inconsistent sometimes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. But we don't stay that way. We acknowledge that we're having struggle. We having problem and we move on in Jesus name and God builds us up. Amen. God builds us up. So it's imperative people of God that we understand that, you know, God is a God of integrity. He's a God of character. Oh, my God. And that's why he allowed that plague uh, to hit Pharaoh's uh, house because of the spirit of deception of them pretending that they was brother and sister. And, and of course he would do that because God honors marriage. And I tell people all the time before he established the church, he established families. As we're reading from Genesis 1 through 12, you see he's all about genealogy. He's all about family. So for all of the churches and ministries that don't believe in family and they want you to be in church 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can't do nothing for your husband. You can't do nothing for your wife because you want to be in church, 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 church. You ain't going to have no marriage. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Hello, somebody. And I, I tell you what, I've always believed in a sanctity of marriage. I always believe in ministry. But, honey, you got to have balance to this thing. Hello, somebody. You got to have balance. Uh, hey, come on, somebody. I don't speak in tongues all the day, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, come on, somebody. You got to have balance. Sharonda, woman of God, you marry. You got to have balance. Hello, somebody. There's a time to preach, a time to prophesy. It's a time to be a wife. It's time to be a preacher. Come on, somebody. You got to have balance. And I think sometimes <laughs> sometime in churches, they don't teach us that. They tell you, oh, get married, but they don't tell you what to do when you get married. And then they want you to stay in church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So how are you supposed to be there for your spouse? You know, that don't work. Uh oh, no, no, no. We don't believe in that. The devil's a liar. Not well, I tell you what, I want to see you win ministries. We believe in balance. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in balance. We believe, you know, we believe in spouse and we believe in marriage we believe in balance and ministry come on somebody come on because it's a crying shame everybody want to be deep but we don't want to be right mm. who help me holy ghost but yes we believe in balance and god believed in the sanctity of marriage too that's why he didn't want them pretending that we were brother and sister amen he hello he Glory to God. He knew. He knew. That's why. Amen. He was like, uh-uh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push them out. I'm going to expose them. I'm going to expose them. Because if I don't expose them, they're going to keep up this lie. Keep up the shenanigan. Sometimes God will, will expose stuff so he can end the shenanigans. Amen. So don't think it's strange when he start exposing stuff. He's just tired of the shenanigans. And he wants it to stop. And see, that's why people of God, that spirit alone of deception, that's why we got to run away from anybody who's playing games and being deceptive. Because when you're playing games and being deceptive, it's going to cause a plague not just on you, but everybody connected to you. The whole house had problems because of them too. Just like Jonah and the whale. I mean, come on, somebody. You on the, you on the ship, making the ship fall now because you want to be acting up. See how, what this teaches us people of God. In a nutshell, is that what you do impact others? If I don't do right, then I can't be effective to you guys. And if you don't do right, your witness is gonna be destroyed, and people ain't gonna respect you, they ain't gonna follow you, they ain't gonna want to hear you talk about God. So, what we do do affect others. You're not in this world by yourself, honey. You may think you are, but oh no, people are watching you. They are watching you, they are watching you. So your life matter, your ministry matter, your witness matter. So we have to be so careful, people of God. We have to be so careful. So amen. We just hope and pray tonight that something was said that blessed your life. We thank God for each and every one of you that's logged in and coming to Bible study. Let me tell you something. Bible study, if we was in a building, would still be, and a lot of times it's the most um, unattended uh, time of the, the week. 
because people get intimidated by the word of God. And that's why we love to take our time with the Bible and let us walk through the Bible together and take our time eating it. You know, if I feed it too fast, you could choke on it and you may not get all you need. But sometimes if we take our time with it and we enjoy it and we marinate it, let the word marinate, then it comes back to you. Your recall is better. Your understanding is better. If I cram too much into it for you, you will forget what you learned and you'll be like, oh, my goodness, that's just too much. But when we take our time and we walk through the journey, then you get to apply what it is that you're reading and you're learning. And you say, wow, that's the truth right there. And then you start to see things in yourself differently. And it just becomes a great, great, great experience for everybody. And so that's why it's imperative. If you say you're a believer in a love of Jesus Christ, um, you must know that, um, God requires us to know of his word. Because see, when we stand before him, we can't say, well, I didn't go to Bible study because I had to do this and I had to do that. And that one and that one and this one and that one and that one is that. He ain't going to want to hear that because he got 66 books. He got them in all different shapes, colors, and forms. There's no excuse for nobody to not know the Bible. And but it's imperative that we take our time because it can be intimidating. You know, and I know there's a lot of Bible scholars out there. And I know, you know, I'm... I, I'm not even going, going, even going to talk about education. I'm just not finna do that. I'm here to tell you that all of that is good discipline. That's a blessing. But when it comes to teaching the, the word of God, we want to break it down so that even a child can understand what deception is, what it means to lie and stuff of that nature. We need to teach our children that it's not good to lie. You know, I'm going to tell you, my mother, she did it in the most simplest form. She said, Angel, if you lie, the devil going to pull you off the bed at night. Now, I know you probably said, well, my goodness, your mother deceived you. But no, she put the fear of me in me because the truth was, and, and later on in years, I would say, Mom, why did you tell me that? She said, because if you keep lying, you're going to go to the devil. That's what I meant. <laughs> she said, so that's why I said it like that, that the devil going to pull you off the bed at night because liars is not going to tarry in his sight. That's what she would tell me. So I say, let to say, people of God, that, you know, <laughs> the, the, the anatomies of the things that I was taught is sometimes comical when I look at it, but they had a really great meaning. You know, they were like parables of what Jesus was teaching his disciples. But I thank God for every last one of them because it taught me a lot of stuff. And so that's why we got to take our time with the word and learn because we could find ourselves in every scripture, every chapter. And we can apply it to our life and make it better. Amen. So I'm just so excited about each and every one of you. And I hope and pray that you all were tremendously blessed through God's word, that something was said that was impactful, that blessed your life, that's going to transform your life, that's going to transcend your life for the better. And I'm praying for better because I want to see you win, not just in the spirit, but in the natural. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is good and he is great and he's so worthy to be praised. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice, those that have been coming in and out off this live, Father. I pray that you bless them, God. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless these, thou, your people, oh God. Bless them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Father. I pray if there be any sick among us, that they will be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for that if there's anyone on this live right now that's in lack, in struggle, in anguish, in mental depression or oppression, Father, that you will deliver them now from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Father. God, touch them in the city of their soul. God, only you can, Father. And so, Father, we trust and believe in you, God, that you're well able to do exceedingly above all that we could ever imagine, God. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your mercy. We appreciate your grace. We appreciate you, oh God, for allowing us to gather on tonight, God, to be able to learn of your word. We thank you, God, for the lessons that we've learned in chapter 12 of Genesis, Father. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will write it upon our heart, God, that we know, God, that we are joint heir, God, that you have called us to be blessed. You have called us to be a blessing. You have called us to walk in integrity and character, God, that you've called us to move, God, in a way, in being dependent on you and not independent of ourselves, Father, because we know that flesh will not glory in your sight, God, and we learn, God, that, oh, God, that we are to be led of your spirit, God, in the name of Jesus, and we pray, God, for the spirit of God to lead us and to guide us into all truth. God, we pray, God, for protection, God. We pray that you will cover our lives, oh God, 
under the blood of Jesus, our families, God. Oh, God, our children, our communities, our homes, God. We pray, God, that every plot, die, popular, a plot of the enemy, oh, God, that you dismantle it, God, that you will expose it and destroy it by fire, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, that those that will curse us, oh, God, that you have already decreed and declared that they are cursed, God. And those, oh, God, that fight against us, oh, God, that they fight against you, God. And, Father, we thank you on tonight, God, uh, that their arms are too short to box with you, God. And we thank you tonight, God, hallelujah, that the devil is under our feet tonight, God, uh, that we're more than conquerors through you, God. Uh, God, that we're overcomers, we're overachievers, God. Uh, oh, God, that we're blessed and highly favored, God. Uh, God, that you called us to be the head and not the tail. You called us to be above and not beneath, God. You've called us to be blessed and highly favored, God. We thank you tonight, God. We thank you for every seed sower tonight, God. We thank you for every giver tonight. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of the people that's obeying you, God. We thank you, God. That you're not slack concerning your word, God. Oh, God, we thank you tonight for change, God. God, we thank you, God, for shifting us, God. We thank you for lifting us, God. We thank you for blessing us, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God, that the blessings of the Lord make us rich. And it added no sorrow, God. We thank you tonight, God. God, that the joy, oh, God, is flooding our soul. Oh, God, the joy of healing, joy of prosperity, joy of your word, joy of salvation, joy of peace, joy of love. We thank you tonight, God. Oh, glory to your name, God. We thank you tonight, God, for what you're doing in the lives of your people, God. Thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, that we're in love with you, God, and you're in love with us tonight, God. Thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah. Oh, ba 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 sha ta ne de ho ro Oh, oh God, thank you tonight, God. Thank you tonight, Father. Thank you for the release, God. 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 The release, God. The release, God. The release, God. Thank you for the release, God. Thank you for the release, God. Oh, God, thank you for the release. Oh, God, I thank you for the release, God. I thank you for the release now. I thank you. Thank you for the release, God. Oh, God, we thank you tonight for the release. There's a release. Oh, God, I thank you for the release tonight. Oh, God, I thank you, God. I thank you for soul ties being destroyed, God. Oh, God, demonic soul ties. Oh, God, we thank you they're destroyed in the name of Jesus. Oh, ba 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 shebe torebe kosha. God, I thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, for demonic word curses being destroyed now. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm okay. God, thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. 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 Thank you tonight, God. Thank you. God, thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. I thank you. The release of the Lord. Oh, my God. The release of God. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. The release of God. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. 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 Oh, God, we bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. Oh, God, we thank you tonight. 
We thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you. We worship you. We thank you. Oh, my God, we thank you tonight. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for your people. Thank you for those that's watching, those that will watch the rebroadcast. Father, bless their lives. Bless their lives. Bless them coming in. Bless them going out, God. Oh, God, bless them. God, with your power. Oh, God, with your wisdom and understanding, God. May it manifest in their life, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, wholeness and completion. Oh, God, let it be the order of the day. Heal hearts tonight. Regulate minds tonight. Do a work, God, that only you can tonight. God, do it for your people. Those that are crying out, God. Those that are crying out in silence. God, those are crying out, God, in secret. Oh, God, do it tonight, God. Oh, God, do it tonight. And oh, God, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ooh, we thank God tonight. We thank God tonight. And the release of God is sure. 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 We thank God for the release of God. Oh, my God. Every shackle is loose from your life tonight. Oh, my, 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 Shia. Oh, glory to God. There is a release coming to you. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but my God, the entanglement of the enemy is no more. He shot Oh, you are free and whom God has set free. You are free indeed. Every entanglement. Oh, my, 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 my. You are free. Oh, God, I thank you tonight. Oh, my, my, my. I love you tonight. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God. God is good. And all the time he's good. He's so worthy to be praised. Who? And there's a liberty of praise that's hitting somebody's life. There's a liberty of praise. You're praising God and you're praising God like you've never praised God before. Who? my God. God is freeing you and liberating you in your spirit. Even when you sleep tonight, you're going to dream beautiful dreams and you're going to be able to have a song. God's going to give you a song, a song of worship and, and praise and admiration unto him. You don't, it's your song. You don't, it don't have to be nice or whatever, but you're going to have a joy inside of you that you've never felt before. For God has sent a release to your home and to your life and you will never be the same again, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I thank you tonight. I thank God for each and every one of you logging in tonight. Amen. We thank God. Listen, I am so excited about what God is doing. Oh, my, my, my. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard that which he got prepared for them. Oh, my, my. You are the them. Hello, somebody. God is blessing and moving by his power. Listen, we just got a few announcements. And I thank God for those of you that are cash app. And I see uh, some cash app uh, offerings came through. God bless you. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you for your giving, your support, for your love. Keep us in prayer. Listen, we are a, a, a church without walls. We are a church, a no walls movement. It is not about a building with us. It's about God's power. Amen. It's about his, his, his perfect will being done in our life. And we thank God we are doing what God has called us to do, to do the Great Commission. And with the Great Commission, it, this is the Great Commission of going global. And this is a global movement. Amen. So we thank God for the no walls movement of I want to see you win ministries. Amen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in the laying on of hands. Yes, we do. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in sanctification and holiness. Yeah, we believe in all that stuff. Amen. But it's not about a building, people of God. It's about the power of God that work is on the inside. Amen. And we thank God for what he's doing in the life of his people. Amen. Listen, we need everybody to get the word out on Saturday. Amen. Many of you that know, don't know, I am the founder of the Seas Academy. We have an awesome facility here in Irving. But uh, because of this COVID stuff, we ain't even thinking about going in that building just yet. So we are doing a profound online prophetic boot camp um, with uh, a wonderful, awesome woman of God. Listen. 
send me an email and say you want to be in so I could send you this this link. Let me tell you something. I have spoken to the woman of God this week and me and her was talking. I'm telling the Holy Ghost fell on us. So we were speaking in tongues and rejoicing. I'm telling you, she's going to release a word on Saturday. I just can't wait. You hear me? And everybody and their mama need to be on this Zoom live. Amen. Well, originally, we were going to charge a fee and all that kind of stuff. I don't even care about the money. Hear me? Because we're going to take care of the woman of God regardless. <laughs> Amen. I want everybody to be on this Zoom because it's going to be so profound. It's going to shift your life. It's going to bless your life. Let me tell you some. God has taken her, elevated her in the realm of the spirit, and she is getting ready to teach. I'm telling you, the word she's going to release is going to knock us out. Amen. We all probably going to be knocked out at our computers. But I am so excited about what God is doing in this woman of God's life. And she's going to be talking about prophetic intercession. And she got a word from the Lord. And so if you want to attend this prophetic intercession, prophetic boot camp, you, all you have to do is send us an email at I want to see you win at gmail.com. Our information is on our Facebook page. Um, it's also, you can go to our website. We got a website. I want to see you win, um, dot org. You can, you, you can subscribe on our website. You can tell a testimony on the website. You can give on the website and you'll learn more about the no walls movement. Amen. Um, and that's on Saturday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, we're gonna have a glorious time. And then on Sunday, if you are not logged in on Sunday, I just don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we have Sunday service here, right here on this platform at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And my sweetie, my fiance, uh, Pastor Derek Miles, will be giving the uh, Father's Day. Um, message, and I'm so excited about it because um, he is a minister of God's word, and I just love to hear him teach and uh, preach God's word. So we're excited, and so we're gonna be here cheering him on, and and I'm just in anticipation of what the Lord's gonna do on Sunday. So uh, bring your uh, brothers and nephews and and, and uh, husband them and all of them, and you get on the line as well because. There's a universal word for everybody on Sunday. So we are excited about what the Lord is doing. At I want to see you win ministry. It's exciting. It's fresh. And we're just excited about being a part of it. Amen. Also, uh, people of God, if you want to uh, give, which a lot of people know how to, but if you, this is your first time and you want to give, become a global partner of ours, tie, so whatever you want to do, you can, um, you can give it through cash app on the dollar sign apostle Angela Daniels, or you can do our online method of www.iwantoseeyouwin.org, or you can send it through PayPal. I want to see you in at gmail.com. Amen. But, um, other than that, we thank God for each and every one of you that have logged in on tonight. We pray again that something was said that blessed your life. Um, we thank God for those of you that do share your testimonies of what God is doing in your praise reports. Um, continue to keep us up in prayer because I'm sure there's a lot more testimonies and a lot more praise reports coming down the pike. Amen. So we just thank you again for um, being with us. Um, so next week, make sure you read chapter 13. We'll be reading chapter 13, taking our time as we're walking through this journey. Amen. Through Genesis to Revelation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. It's my prayer till we get together on Saturday. Amen. May the Lord bless you. You have a great day. Bye-bye.